2.50 to play. We still have not seen a point in overtime. It's 69 all. Corneman way out on the right side. Guarded by Looper, up top, Anderson, left wing, shut Loffel. Lobs it right wing, Corneman, right corner, Rodert, who will drive baseline, lay it up on the block, good for two. Rodert with 20, Jack's lead with 2.30 to play, 71-69. Bigham spins, lost the ball, saved it, guarded by Anderson. 20 to shoot, Bigham will pull it back out. Left side, Kevin Looper. Screen, she'll drive right side of the lane against Anderson. 10 to shoot. Looper spins against Anderson. Free throw line out to Volker, who will drive left side of the lane. Jumper on the way from 10. Baseline no good. Rebound fought for. It's loose. Controlled by Savannah Buck for Oral Roberts. Looper left wing. Deep three. Too strong. Rebound. It is grabbed by Schuttloffel. And on the back will be called on Buck. And as Buck fell off of her, she went one way. Schuttloffel went the other. They both hit hard. Lori, how about this? Jennifer Schuttloffel, who... Uh, has shot three free throws this year. Her role has increased all year. She's at the free throw line with a 158 to play. The Jacks are up two with a two shot foul. First free throw up and good. You know, she's a pretty good free throw shooter. Sometimes, you know, if you don't shoot any, it makes it a little bit more difficult. You're not in the game situation of doing it, but she's, she's not a poor free throw shooter. Michelson back in. You talk about ice water in the vein. Second free throw for the Roosevelt High School grad here in Sioux Falls. On the way, she makes them both. If you're just getting off work, driving home, wondering why we're still playing, we're in overtime. 1.58 to play in our first overtime. South Dakota State 73, Oral Roberts 69. The Jacks led by nine with three and a half to play. The Golden Eagles scored the last nine points to force overtime. But the Jacks have scored twice here in the overtime, a rotor two and two shut lawful free throws. Golden Eagle ball, 1.53 to play. J.C. Bigham, screen from Buck, top of the key. Back to the left wing to uh, Janae Volker, who will drive left baseline. Up top, Bigham against Shutloff, will drives the lane. Left-handed scoop shot, good and easy drive for Bigham. Way too easy as far as the Jacks are concerned. Pretty easy, but she gave a little head fake or a little pass fake out to the, the wing like she's going to pass that. Got Maria to kind of go for it and, and ended up with an easy layup. They need to go to score, and they've got to be smart. They've got to go at, you know, take their opportunities when they get them. Don't force it, but yet be aggressive. Michael will inbound from her own baseline. Her rotor will receive the inbound on her own left block. Back to Michelson on her own right block. Right side, Corneman at the three-point line. Double team in trouble. Finds Roder just in front of half court. She'll find Shutloff. Back to Roder. Jax will slow it up here. 125 to play, 17 on the shot clock. Michael sit up top. Left side, Shutloffel. Looks left. Cross court, right wing to Kenny Corneman. Right corner, Kristen Roder. Dribbles out to the wing. Picks up. Skip pass, left wing, Shutloffel. Right block, Bover, who lost it on the way up, but a foul. Bover never got a good handle of that ball, but Pyle was called for the foul on her way up. It's the fourth on Jordan Pyle, and Bover will shoot two. That's a great pass there by Jennifer Shutlovel and Shutlovel into Maria, and you're right, she didn't have a great handle on it, but Maria has great hands, and, and uh, usually you don't see her catch it quite like that, but she's got good enough hands to be able to kind of fumble it and, and still get a shot up. Bover good on the first, she has 18. Bover was averaging 24 points for the tournament, but she has 18 today. 110 to play. In our first overtime, Bover's second free throw, no good. So it's 74-71, Jacks by three, Oral Roberts ball, 105 to play. Bigham will drive the lane, Bover steps in front, tough layup, no good, rebound, shut off him. Off to Michelson in the backcourt. Oral Roberts could lay off, try for a stop. Michelson against Looper, right side. Nears half court, finds Roder right wing. Roder left side, Corneman a little behind her, Corneman saves, up to Michelson. 45 seconds to play, 15 on the shot clock. Shut Loffel, right wing, Jacks by three. Michelson 10 to shoot, left side, Corneman. Left corner, Rodert for a wide open three. It's off the back iron. Rebound to Oral Roberts' is Savannah Buck. Four second differential between shot clock and game clock. Golden Eagles down three. Bigham will drive, middle of the lane, layup over Bulver, good. It's a one point game and a timeout to Jerry Finkbonner. Important to note, the arrow does point in SDSU favor on a jump ball. It's always big at this time in the game because there are kind of pile-ups, there's scrums when you go for rebounds and loose balls. And if you've got the, the arrow in your favor, that's always a good thing. Michael Simmel inbound. All 10 players will be in the backcourt with 24 and 9 tenths of a second left. Michael Sidney inbound the basketball. She'll find Young underneath the basket. Oral waited to foul. Michelson back to Young. The Jacks want Young to be fouled and she was with 19 and 2 tenths of a second left. Young was passing it 
as she got fouled, it's Buck second, and Jerry Finkbonner, I think, wanted Michelson to be fouled instead of Young. However, it's interesting by the numbers, they're equal uh, free throw shooters. They're all good free throw shooters. I don't think they wanted Jill to be fouled there by his reaction. You know, you got two things working for you. Macy missed one. Um, earlier, just I can't remember if it was the end of overtime or, overtime or the end of that regulation. But Jill's been on the bench a lot of this second half, so she's a little cold, although she's a, a terrific free throw shooter. First free throw, good for Young. Two point game, 19 and two tenths of a second left. Kelly Kindle checks in for Savannah Buck for Aura Roberts. Young second is also good. She does what the doctor ordered, and Shutloffel checks in for Young. So 19 and two tenths of a second left. Jackrabbit 76, Golden Eagle 73. Oral Roberts needs a three to tie. My I think they can go for a quick two if they choose to as well. I don't, they're not going overly fast. I'm not sure if they're trying to, but. Bigham off a screen. Michelson Ooh. fell down, so did Bigham. And in the process, Michelson called for her fourth. And that's a break for the Golden Eagles. As to the free throw line, will go Bigham for two free throws. It is a bit of a break. Bigham's a pretty good free throw shooter. Um, Angie just took, you know, just a few seconds off the clock. 12 and two tenths of a second left. Bigham, the freshman from McAllister, Oklahoma. The first of two is good for an 87% free throw shooter. She ranked in the top 20 in the nation in free throw shooting during the year. So she's no slouch. Bigham, second free throw, good. It's a one point game. Roder will inbound the ball. She'll find Corneman, who is fouled immediately by Bigham with 10 and 5 tenths of a second left. It's Bigham's four. And Ketty Corneman, who was a 75% free throw shooter, will go to the stripe for two on her 22nd birthday. 15 points for the senior from Yankton. She had 10 in the first half, five in the second. She'll shoot two, Jacks lead by one. The first of two for Ketty Corneman, good. She needs this one, so the best the Golden Eagles could do is tie. Young out, shut Laffle in. 77-75 Jackrabbits with 10 and 5 tenths of a second left. Corneman, five dribbles, free throw up, good. It'll be interesting, they're out of timeouts here. Looper, nine seconds left front court. Looper dribbles, pass out top, tipped. Loaded the steal, and she'll be fouled with three and seven tenths of a second left. And Kristen Robert, who missed her last five threes, when if she makes one of them, the Jacks could have won, comes up with the biggest play of the day so far. Karma sometimes comes around, and with one free throw, Rudder could all but put this thing away. Yeah, and she had a, uh, just a, a great, she's had a great tournament. She had a great beginning to the game. She had a really rough finish to regulation, had the turnovers and uh, some missed threes, but it's good to see her come back. She had a nice driving layup. Now she's got a big steal and a chance to kind of put this thing away. And that was Janae Volker's fifth personal foul, the senior from Newton, Kansas, in tears on the bench as Rodert's first free throw around and out. Rodert needs this one. And they do not have any timeouts. Correct. Rodert second free throw with three and seven tenths of a second left. She needs one, she's a 79% free throw shooter. Free throw up and good. Pyle will inbound. She'll get it in to Kindle in the backcourt. Two seconds, half court shot is no good. The Jackrabbits are dancing again. That has been such a struggle at the beginning. And the Jacks had to battle through so much. They had to battle through blowing a nine point lead in the final three minutes. And they had to really grind it out. But the Jackrabbits have won back to back Summit League championships and are headed once again to the NCAA tournament.